The transform effect is found under the distort category, but I'm just gonna search for it here, transform underneath distort and apply it to this first copy of my logo. What the transform effect does is gives you a second layer of transform controls that are independent from the layer controls down here. So on the right side without the effect, if I open up those transform controls, I've got anchor point position, scale rotation and opacity. And on the transform effect, Applied to the first layer, we have anchor point, position, scale, rotation, and opacity. And these all behave in the exact same way. If I increase or decrease the scale, it's gonna scale it up or down, just like increasing or decreasing the scale on this one. What you'll notice is because this transform is an effect, the bounds of the layer are not changing and the transform controls for that layer are not changing either. This is only affecting the contents of the layer, not the layer itself. And this can be really useful just for having a secondary set of transform controls on any given layer, especially when you're combining it with some other effects. Let me reset this effect and show you that if I move the anchor point around, we get this little control showing up here, as well as for the position. And moving either one of these around is shifting stuff around. Just like if I were to go to the anchor point of this layer, to the actual layer anchor point, adjusting the anchor point keeps the anchor point right where it is in the comp and shifts the contents of the layer around it. That's the exact same thing that's happening right here. But with a quick little expression, if I just double click on the word anchor point, it'll open that up down here in the layers. I can use the property pick whip to click and drag the position property to the anchor point property. And now the position value is always going to be where the anchor point is. So I can freely adjust this anchor point without shifting the contents of the layer around. What this will let me do is put the anchor point someplace else, like maybe the chin here, and now when I scale, that transformation is gonna happen off of the anchor point, or if I rotate, same thing. I'll reset that back, and now take a look at some other controls that the transform effect includes, but After Effects doesn't by default in the transform controls over here. If we take a look, we have a skew property, and this is really useful just for adding a skew distortion. So you can skew this however you want, and you can also change the skew axis. So if I wanted this at a 90 degree angle, that's all I have to do to skew that. This is especially useful for text. Let me shut these layers off for a second and just write out some text. Center that up and then add the transform effect to it. And then add a skew. And just like that, I'm able to slant my text. There are a few more properties that the transform effect gives us, like this one right here that says use compositions shutter angle. Now what this is talking about is the composition settings, if we go into those, and look at the advanced tab. There is a shutter angle setting here underneath motion blur. This setting controls how much motion blur is produced when something moves quickly inside of your comp. So let me show you what I mean by that. First, I need to enable the motion blur for the comp and I also need to enable the motion blur for the layers that I want motion blur applied to. And now I'm just gonna animate these very simply. I'm gonna set the scale of both of them to 50%. And then on this instance, without the transform effect, I'll set a scale keyframe. And on this layer, I will set a scale keyframe on the actual transform property. Go back to the first frame, press U to bring up that keyframe on this layer, and then set both of these scale back down to zero. Then I'll just easy ease these with the F9 key on the keyboard, go into my graph editor and exaggerate this motion a little bit more. And what this is going to do is produce some motion blur. If I go right here to the fastest point of the motion, we'll zoom in and we see that motion blur has been applied. And if I go back to my composition settings into the advanced and adjust the shutter angle, it actually controls how much motion blur is being produced by that motion. So if I turn it up to a really high number, we're gonna have a lot of motion blur. If I turn it down to something low like 90, it's gonna have a lot less. So I'm gonna reset that back down to 180, click okay, and then jump back to the transform effect. I'm going to uncheck Use Composition's Shutter Angle and watch what happens. The motion blur goes away for that layer. Now I also have this Shutter Angle control, which allows me to custom dial in that Shutter Angle for this layer individually. So it's disregarding the Composition Shutter Angle and allowing me to dial in a custom amount of motion blur for that layer. The one catch with this setting is that this only applies to motion that's produced by this effect. If I copy and paste these scale keyframes from this layer, and paste them after that effect. So after our initial scale animation, it's now happening further in time. You see that now our motion blur is back to what it was, and this transform effect doesn't do anything. So this is not a comp setting, this is a specific setting for the motion blur produced by this effect only. 
Okay, I'm gonna get rid of these keyframes and finally look at this last property sampling, which is currently set to bilinear. And to show you what this is actually doing, I'm gonna zoom in nice and close. I'm gonna set this to 100% scale. And these pixels right here, that's kind of soft at this 1600% magnification, is called anti-aliasing. It's a way that After Effects is smoothing out the transition from one block of color to the next in the composition, and it's what makes your graphics look nice and crisp. If I were to turn off the anti-aliasing with this switch, you can see it's much chunkier. It does not look nearly as good at that 1600%. Now, there are actually different types of anti-aliasing methods, and that's exactly what this sampling is. So if I were to scale this up past 100% within the effect, you can see it's getting really splotchy and kind of blocky. And by default, the anti-aliasing that it's using is the bilinear method. If I change this to bicubic, you can see that it just slightly changes the way that it's upscaling. So not much of a difference, but something to be aware of and something that the transform effect has to offer. But that is the transform effect in a nutshell. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you want to support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.